Hey guys, Chris again, ClassicVWBugs.com, and in this video we're going to go over why the 1967 Beetle is so special. I get emails a lot, a lot of calls on a 67 Beetle, a lot of people who sign up for my Find a Bug program want a 67 Beetle because they hear all the bells and whistles about it. The one year only features, the last of the low back seats, hard dash, all that kind of stuff. We're going to go over that here in this video and uh, really go over why this car is so special. And as time has gone on, it's gotten more and more popular and more and more in a want mode. People want this year car. So let's get to it. So here we are, guys. We are at an old website that I used to frequent when I first started my business. And I thought this was a really great breakdown. It's been around for a very, very long time, probably maybe 20 years or so. Uh, and I just did, again, a Google search for it. It just... It's, Dave, it's Rob and Dave's air-cooled Volkswagen pages. And if you punch in on Google, the VW Beetle uh, changes through the years. You'll see um, the list, all the years and all the, the major changes. They don't cover every little change, but the most obvious of changes they go through. And let's scroll down to 67. We'll briefly go over what 67 had to offer. And before we even get to that, let's just like say, hey, look at, this beauty right now that's on bringatrailer.com. Uh, Bring a Trailer is a very popular auction site. I think it's, it's really starting to kick butt. And I think more popularity is coming towards Bring a Trailer than um, these other auction sites. But here's just a ruby red beetle. Looks very, very nice. Very flashy. Just alone, the look of the 67 alone on this front shot. It's unique, of course. What's the first thing is that front bumper. You still have the old towel bar bumpers but with the straight headlight on the American market bound Beetle. And that's the one year features that's uh, going, gone on with this. You got a one year hood, you got the one year deck lid, that kind of thing. And there's, there's features on this that really make it stand out from all the rest. But if we go back to Dave's, uh, Rob and Dave's uh, uh, website, we'll go quickly through the list here of what did change. Now they do show um in, in the in the top here engine d that is still a 1200 engine so that definitely was not in the american market right there uh what that was was an actual standard model 67 so no bells no whistles no chrome maybe the bumpers were the same color as the car same as the hubcaps if you've ever seen the standard model uh, volkswagen beetles for the time you'll see they're very bare bones uh, no, no, nothing flashy. This was a utilitarian vehicle just to get you from point A to point B and nothing flashy. Also in Europe, they still offered a 1300 model, uh, similar to what came in 66. Uh, and then they also offered, um, they say here is an E case and an F case. So still 1300s. I don't know what the major differences were between those engines, something with smog here. And then they also offered the 1500 market. So in Europe, most people did opt for the 1300 uh, just because that saved you on tax purposes. Uh, most people went for that to, to save some bucks. Uh, a 1500 model uh, was kind of, I guess, the deluxe model. That was the bells and whistles. Now, European 1567 uh, Beetle, um, they still, it's so funny, they still retain six volts in Europe. But they went with disc brakes in the front for the European market and for lug wheels. So it's just weird. Sometimes they went a little bit ahead than the American market and in some other areas they stayed behind. But predominantly in the American uh, market, it was the HO, the H case, H0, and you had the 1500. And that was the, uh, the big, big push at that point. And that was just a more powerful engine. It really was a very, very nice, nice little boost. You got 12 volt electronics in a 67 American bound Beetle, and the uh, the generator increased from 180 to uh, 360 watts. Voltage regulator was moved to under the back seat, so it was the first time they took it off of the on top of the uh, the generator. Uh, I actually like that cleaner look, and a lot of times when people want to convert their older Beetle to 12 volt, that's what we do for them. We'll actually move the regulator under the back seat. I do not like to put it. Uh, mounted on the fan shroud anywhere or inside the engine compartment. It just kind of looks silly. So the swing axles, of course, uh, they widened out. They got they got wider. The clutch 
uh, diameter with the 200 millimeter. You had a, a 132th ring gear. Uh, it replaces the 109. You had a dual brake master cylinder system, which is a great system to have. Even today, like if you have an older Beetle, I do. It, it's probably a good idea to upgrade to a dual master uh, just for safety concerns. And same here. See what it says. The, the front disc brakes here came in the 1500 models, but not the U.S., uh, outside door handles had push button. Inside door handles were recessed, so they got rid of the ice pick uh, door handle to open the doors on the 67. Two-speed wipers, backup lights on the U.S. models. Vertical uh, headlights replaced the slope light, like I showed you with the red bug. Uh, you see the, the headlight here. This is what it was till the end. Drivers finally got an armrest. I'm actually having a conversation with a client of mine. It has a 66 Beetle. And he was wondering if there's an armrest on the driver's side, and there is not, which is really, it's just the 67 was the first time they did that. Uh, slimmer chrome trim uh, on the outside. So 66 and earlier had the real fat, the fat wide trim on it. Um, the driver's outside mirror becomes standard, go figure. And uh, rear anti sway bar was added. So those are the predominantly the the upgrades for 67. Now they also had the one year features, of course, like I mentioned about, which was. Um, the rear aprons, the front hood, things like that. We'll go through things like that right now. But as it sits, you know, look at that car. And as it sits, that's what's very popular just from the get-go, just from, you know, looking at it, you know, face-to-face. -face. That car has a great stance to it, and it's got just a very unique uh, look to it. And that's predominantly the reason why people like it. Once they got to 67, the interiors kind of this is where Volkswagen was getting cheaper on the interiors. Uh, this is where your typical TMI stuff comes in uh, and they kind of model after, you know, maybe 66, 67 and on upwards. Uh, and they offer this kind of material even for earlier Beatles. But in general, this is where the basket weave material was coming into play was around this time frame. So as we scroll down, this is a, actually a very beautiful Beetle. I, I'll give him that. There's a few things. He's got a 009 on there, which, you know, purists will say to get rid of that. Uh, I got a fella, um, Eric Shoemaker, uh, 1967beetle.com. So if you go check out his website, he's got some great information all on 67 Bug. So it would not have had the chrome wheels. You would have had, of course, the two-tone wheels. And it was a two-year wheel on uh, 66, 67 with a flat hubcap. So you've had five lug but it had a flat hubcap. And um, this is when the hubcaps were known to start denting when you were popping them on there. The aftermarket hubcaps that are offered today, they're a little problematic. I mean, you go driving down the road and they fly they fly off. They're a little loose. But ruby red, of course, was a standard color then. There weren't many colors offered in 67. Um, you kind of just had your black, your Java green, your red, your uh, VW blue. Your Zenith Blue, Savannah Beige, those were the colors. Uh, getting, again, real basic. What's unique of also about 67, the one year, was is the sloped towel bars here. These are not sloped. This looks like an aftermarket bumper here, and it's got a straight bar here. So a lot of times it's tough to get. you got to source those bars and either get them chromed and reattach them to a new bumper, which I did before on my, my past 67s. Uh, but there is some talk that early 67 um, still had this straight bumper uh, towel bars. I've seen comments about that online in the forums. You go to the Samba.com or you go to my friend Eric Shoemaker's website and you see there's conversations about that. Uh, but here's the backup taillights that started in 67. And again, the one-year deck lid as well for 67 only. It did come with a driver's mirror. Now, the oval, the, the round mirror here probably is not correct. I think it's more the pear-shaped that should have been on a 67. And here's the, you know, the one here handle. They say it's one year, but you do find these sometimes on a 66, a very late 66. They started putting this door handle on. There's the raised VW emblem. And again, that's the last year. That's the one-year hood. It's uh, the only thing different from that hood to say a 64, 65, 66 hood is the chrome strip, the thickness of the, co the chrome strip. So black would have been a kind of a standard thing uh, for a red, a ruby red beetle. Um, they're also, uh, you did have the off-white. Let's just go in here for a second. 
Okay, so here's some of the colors that were offered. Now, in an American bound market, it pretty much was this pattern here and the black that you see. So you had the two choices. In Europe, though, they had a different pattern here. Uh, I don't know if you would call it a cord pattern, uh, what it's actually called. I don't know how easy it is or hard to get this material if you did have a European model. Uh, maybe Heritage uh, could shed some light on that if you went to their website to see. But um, primarily it was either the off-white or the black for, say, a ruby red beetle. And you had this type of pattern, uh, kind of a cloth pattern maybe. Maybe it's cloth uh, for the Euro market. And they have the other colors here. If you go to the Samba.com, which is a great resource for this stuff. So if I went to the archives here and you go to literature, you click on that and then you'll see a lot of literature. You also have the owner's manuals as well. You have painted upholstery swatches here. You have the wiring. You have a whole list of things here, uh, you know, to show their postcards, artworks, backgrounds, registry. And then even if you're looking for businesses, say, in your area, maybe you're in you know, Oklahoma or something or Kansas, and you're looking for a shop that uh, is in your area, you just come over here to businesses and then maybe that can help you. But just keep in mind, this website is kind of old. I don't know how often it's updated with those business listings. A lot of them could be gone by now. Um, but so here is a uh, the VW Blue, which was a great color. They didn't offer black in the VW Blue. Mm -hmm. As you can see here, it was just the off-white. But how many times I, I do see the VW Blue listed with black, interior uh so it's very interesting uh what you see here but they have all the colors here java green as well java had the two different colors the off white and this saddle looking color as well so but uh here's the, here's the black interior so which would have been an option um now keep in mind see here the the seam on the top of the seat here that is not correct it, it, this should all wrap over this seat and there should be no seam on that but um you know if you go through wolfsburgwest.com they have the correct uh seat that you can put in that's why i usually go with them uh for that and now even uh here's the the recliner part here to get you in and out of the back seat this came in a little after i think maybe you know mid mid 67 some early 67 they still had the handle at the bottom kind of like a 66 uh and then maybe this came in and I don't know, maybe very, very late 66, you know, before the year turn. Uh, it's, it's debatable then, too, when when all that stuff happened. But if, if anybody else knows those dates, shine the light. So, And, you know, the, like these seatbelts were not correct. That was the other thing about 67. You had the lobster claw seatbelts. That was, again, another one-year only thing. This looks like an aftermarket that was put on here. Okay, so here's where the, the recess came in for the, the door opener here. It used to be the ice pick earlier on. Now, this handle is actually incorrect, too. Uh, it did have a black knob, but it was a, it was a black flat-like rubber knob, not this hard knob uh, that you can get, again, from Wolfsburg West. It's a 67 one-year-only handle. So... That's that ruby red. You also have the 12 volt sticker that came in this year. Um, you would have had, these would have been clear plugs here. So a couple of the things I want to point out. So this radio, you would have had a Sapphire 5, uh, I believe, in this year. Uh, this looks like a retro radio. The knobs, of course, would have had the distinct short rubber knobs on the dash here you also would have had no knob on the ashtray so um this is just kind of some aftermarket stuff you can pick up those knobs though so if you did want to go back to being correct you could do that um but yeah the ashtray would not have had a knob here so we can go move on here and show let's see here's one of my babies my savannah beige i did a video on 67 um, you know, a few years ago, talking about the one year features on it and stuff, you know, I did deviate a little bit, of course, from originality, um, since Savannah beige, it's a beautiful color to me. I used to call this car cappy because it reminded me of a cappuccino. <laughs> but, um, if we go to the slideshow gallery, I'll show you what I put in on this car, my interior. 
Now, the other thing I wanted to point out to you see the horn grills here. It should be the two fingers distance from the bead to the horn grill on this red vehicle. What you what I did spot and go through here quickly. Okay, and then to the headliner too. I want to show you this is a one piece headliner. I did do the one piece as well in, in my 67, but originally you would have had a tuck around this back window. That was really the only tuck uh, that came in on that car. Okay, also here, okay, so here's the horn grills. You see the distance between the horn grill and the bead. That's the that's how you know there's aftermarket fenders on it. If we go back to my Savannah Beige, look how close that grill is. Those were original fenders I had on that car. And if you look to like the catch here should be silver, not red. Um, the beads, uh, yes, were probably an off color of the original color of the car. I, I went with black beads on my car. I just like the black beads. I think it stands out a little bit more. Last year, the gas tank, uh, the cap inside the car, once they went to 68, then the door came on the passenger side. So that's, again, another last year feature. The 1500 N is a great engine. And what's great about that engine is that you can upgrade it easily to a 1600. I don't even think they really sell the 1500 um jugs anymore pistons and cylinders it's just one of those things uh that's just you just go to 1600 uh or they even have the 1641 uh piston and cylinder kit it's a big bore you don't have to machine the block you can put that in and again give the car a little extra boost that's the great thing about i think in general what attracts the 67 more than any other car um or at least a lot of the cars from the 60s is the fact that it still looks old it's got the one-year features on it, the unique features on it, and it's got the PEP, it's got the 12 volts, that kind of thing. Now, you can update all your earlier cars to do basically the same thing. But, uh, yeah, I love my Savannah Beige, my Cappy. I mean, I wish I had that car back. I made a video about that. I had the original sticker for that car. Um, it just was a beauty. And Savannah Beige is great. So on Savannah Beige, you would not have had the uh, black running boards like I had here. Again, they would have been an off beige or like a beige color. Um, so I went with a two tone, like you see here, the burgundy with the tweed inside, and that's see here's the the correct uh window crank for your sixty seven. You see, it's got the rubber knob on it. The aftermarket rubber knobs, I will tell you, are pretty weak and they do kind of break off. Uh, so kind of kind of a pain in the butt there. But and I went with the tweed headliner, of course. That's that's my signature kind of thing. And here's the back piece. One piece here. I did not go with the multi-piece. So again, there would have been another tuck around the back window. So I'm just, I'm unscripted here, guys. I'm just going through pictures and just kind of giving, keeping you up to, get you up to speed of what 67 is all about, and why it's such a beautiful car and why everybody likes it. Um, so I went with the two-tone. This is one of our signature interior kits that you see here. It was just a stellar car. I, I, I actually, I would really wish I had it back. Maybe I'll just grab another one and do another one. But and then I did a uh, a Java green, but I made it I, I made it a little bit darker. This car, this '67 that I did, man, I got into three concourses in one year with this car. Uh, just in in I can't believe it's 2016 that far uh, back already. But um, just a beautiful car. Uh, I, I really missed that one too. So got some new spots on it and things. So you guys can always go check these these out on my website and see what I did, what kind of interiors I put in. And, you know, when I did these interiors, um, you know, the, the people who bought these cars did not care that they, they loved the fact that it was really upgraded and it was given more of a luxurious look, something I think that, you know, too bad Volkswagen didn't do because, uh, you know, the cars were just so cool. But again, I, I don't, they were not meant to be these pretty looking things, you know, it was just a utilitarian point A to point B type of a car. So yeah, I, I look at that interior, just just stellar. And I, I did all that through SoFine, my this company I use out in Colorado. They've been around for a long time. So 67. And then here's a Euro 67 that I got. And it was actually right hand drive. How freaking cool was that? Um that car's actually down here in Florida. And I wish I could I hope I could meet up with the guy and see this car once again. Uh that was a very, very cool car. So the European 67s, as cool as they are, I mean, I, I really love them. Um, it was just pretty much like an upgraded 66 in a way because you still kept the sloped headlights and, you know, it was still six volt. Um, 
But so, so here, the, the white car, the, the Lotus white would have had the correct red interior like this or black, and it would have wrapped around the top of the seat back. No seam at the top. Look at that right-hand drive. That was my first time I got a right-hand drive car, and I found it. I in some it was in some guy's bar and I, in the Midwest. I, I forgot that exactly where I got this thing, but uh, super cool car. It was a little odd driving on the right. I got to be honest. In the beginning, it was a little a little quirky, but uh, and people were looking at me on the roads like, "Who the hell? What is he doing?" You know. But um, yeah, very cool car. Uh, and that 1500 engine, man, it's just got great pep. And that's what's just great about this year. So I think pre predominantly that's what it is. And then this 67 Ruby I had, uh, we did not paint this car, but we did do some upgrades on it. And then there's the correct like off-white interior or the black, you know. So, and you see the ashtray here, no knob. And of course, the correct black knobs for the dash. Uh, this was an aftermarket radio that was put on that car. Um, this car did have a dual port engine, I believe, when we got it. So there's your correct tuck around the back window. That's what have been the quote unquote multi piece. And uh, that's what really what it was. That's about it. I the one piece bypasses that. And part of the reason I go with the tweed headliners is just because. You know, these vinyl headliners today, they're just, I don't know, the quality it just keeps getting worse and worse. It just feels like plastic, you know. So, but yeah, there's there's the dual port engine this guy had in the car that we bought. We bought this out of a fellow in Connecticut, um, but a very pretty car. So, I wanted to show you one other thing. Electric car market. Dot com. If you look at, I'm going to go to the values here. We'll go to Volkswagen. I hate these pop ups. 67. Okay. Beetle. All right. So right now they have the coupe near 20, uh, near 30,000, uh, give or take, um, for just a hard top. I think for a sunroof, you're going to add, see, they say add 5%. I'd probably, Add a little bit more for that. I'd probably add maybe 10 to 15% more. Uh, even for convertible, convertible would be more. Look at number one convertibles almost is about 40, almost 47,000. Now, what's interesting is so keep this in mind. Here's the values of 67, 46, 8, and 28, 6. And at this site, if you go back a year, you say 66, value drops a little even for convertible. So it really shows like even 64, 65, 66, they're not as va valued as high as a 67. Let's go back one more to 65. Yep, same thing. So it's interesting, you know, that that car is just super special and it just, I don't know, there's just a certain style about it. You know, it handles really well. Um, it's got the pep. It's got the old look, the unique look to it. That's predominantly what it's all about. 64, see the same thing, 28. I mean, I love 64. I think it, that every car in the 60s, each had one-year features on them to some degree. Um, 67, I guess, just has the most of the one-year features. So, again, that's the reason it's it's just super attractive. So, I'll leave a link to my other video that I did a few years ago in regards to 67. Where I go around my, my Savannah Beige at the time and point out all the, the major pluses and minuses of the vehicle. I mean, if there's any minus to it all, um, parts may be a little bit more difficult to get some things. Um, but for the most part, I mean, they're still readily available. You're going to pay a little bit more. Those lobster claw seatbelts are going to be expensive. So... Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's just it's it's a wonderful vehicle. Definitely check out the through the years uh, website to see the differences and the changes that happened. Um, and then one unique one thing which was really interesting was I I know a few guys that worked for Volkswagen back in the day, and my good friend Herman that lives in the area, he was their Volkswagen's regional troubleshooter. And you know when when '67 came out, it was 
a popular car, but no other than the other ones, you know, nothing to the point where you say, oh my God, this is the groundbreaking. I mean, yeah, the 12 volts and the, the boost in the electronics and, and, the, and the engine and all, but as time went on, I think the car got more popular because as time went on, they were getting into the emissions things, the high headrest, the padded dash, and getting rid of, they changed the body style in 68. 68 and 69, they actually dumbed down the engine uh, to lower, you know, for, for emission standards. They had a lower uh, compression and things like that. Um, so, you know, you might have a 1500 engine from 68 and 69, but the 67 engine is actually is still a better engine. So he all he knew that, and a lot of the workers at the uh, the dealership would say the same thing: the '67 engine is the is the good engine. And it was until six, uh, '70 when uh, things kind of changed and it got even better. Um, but the '68 '69, it kind of lulled that engine to just a, abide by government regulations and such. Uh, from what I understand, they dished uh, the the pistons. But um, yeah, guys, if you got any questions, you want to leave a comment, leave it in the comment section below. Um, I just want to kind of point this out. What makes 67 just so damn special? And I think, you know, the look of that car, just 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 the face of it alone is very distinctive compared to all the other Beatles. And, you know, this was the huge transition period at this point in the last year of that real that old look. And uh, you just got all the bells and whistles of 12 volt and electronics and, and comfort, really, and a wider stance in the back. Um, just super cool. And on a collectability standpoint, it's getting higher and higher uh, just because of the one year features on it. Thankfully, I mean, they sold a lot of Volkswagens in 67. So a lot of things are still out there. But as time goes on, it's going to get a little more difficult. Um, so. I hope you liked that video. I uh, just kind of wanted to go over why 67 is just very special. Uh, it's it's in my top five for sure. It's not my favorite year, uh, but I, I'll take a 67 any day if I find a good one. Um, they're just they're really, really awesome cars. So, all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care. Um...